For months, I've been hearing about Zone 2 training. Apparently it boosts performance, and it's great for longevity. GQ even wrote about it. As part of my mission to live a longer and fuller life, I decided to go all in and give Zone 2 training a try. If you're super confused because you have no idea what Zone 2 is, don't worry. I'm going to explain that soon, but first I'm gonna give you a few methods that you can start using to train zone two intuitively. There are a few tools that you can use to build some intuition around what it feels like to train zone two. One of those is nasal breathing. The idea is to run at a pace where you feel comfortable just breathing through your nose. I'm about to go on a 30 minute run only breathing through my nose and then we'll check in to see how my heart rate was and to see if I was able to stay in zone two doing that. If you're just getting started with zone two training and you don't have a wearable device to track your heart rate, nasal breathing can be a great place to begin. There are a few downsides to this method of staying in zone two. The first is it's just not very accurate. The second is you can actually become more efficient at nasal breathing over time. Over the span of several months, you could get to the point where you're training zone three or even zone four while just breathing through your nose. I'm taking a walk break right now because it started to get hard to just breathe through my nose. That's a pretty good indication that my heart rate was getting above that zone two target. So just taking a little walk break can help that come back down. We're going to take a look at the data to see how I did staying in zone two while just breathing through my nose. But first, let's look at a second method for intuitively staying in zone two. Now I'm gonna try something called the talk test. The talk test is simple. Can you exercise at a conversational pace? So I'm gonna make a phone call to my mom and just talk to her on a 30 minute run. Hi mom. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing good. So basically I'm testing to see if I can stay in zone two while talking to you. So. Okay, what, you're gonna run talk to me? Like nasal breathing, the talk test also isn't perfect, but it's a great place to get started for most people. One of the biggest problems with the talk test is that there's not really a standard conversational pace. Everyone's idea of what a conversational pace is differs. Let's look at the results. Remember how I was saying you can become more efficient at nasal breathing? Check this out. When breathing through just my nose, I spent 24% of my run in zone two and 66% of the run in zone three. It turns out the talk test keeps me in zone two a little bit better. It kept me in zone two for 50% of my run and zone three for 47% of my run. If you're a serious athlete or someone that's spending a lot of time and money on their training, then it's probably worth it to just go to a sports lab and have them calculate this for you. If you're a bit more casual in your training approach, Here's how you find your zone two. To calculate it, you need to know your maximum heart rate and your resting heart rate. To find my maximum heart rate, I used Gellish's nonlinear formula. This gave me an estimated max heart rate of 188.3 beats per minute. I'm leaving the formula in the description for this video. You can copy and paste it into Google. Just put your age where it says your age, and that will give you your theoretical max heart rate. For my resting heart rate, I'm using data from my Whoop 4.0, which I literally wear nonstop. According to my Whoop, over the past week, my average resting heart rate has has been 53 beats per minute. Once you know this info, you can plug it into a website like the one I'm linking below, and it will calculate your heart rate zones for you. It turns out I'm in zone two when my heart rate is between 135 beats per minute and 148 beats per minute. After calculating my heart rate zones, I manually entered them into my Apple Watch. Staying in zone two can be quite difficult. Almost every morning I go for a trail run or a hike. I'm about to go on a run and see if I can spend 90% of the run perfectly in zone two. To do this, I set up alerts on my Apple Watch so that if I drop below my target heart rate, then I'll get a notification. And if I go above my zone two, then I'll get an alert as well. By setting up these alerts, I hope that I can stay more accurately in zone two and achieve that 90% that I'm looking for. The trail I'm on has a lot of uphill and a lot of downhill. The constant change in incline can make it difficult to maintain a steady heart rate. For about the next quarter mile here, the trail behind me slopes upwards. So on this part of the trail, I'm gonna have to be really careful to make sure that I keep my pace steady or even slow down a bit to stay in zone two. Probably my favorite thing about training zone two is that you can almost get on autopilot. On my morning run, I usually think about content I'd like to create on this channel. I find that zone two is almost relaxing and a little bit meditative. I had to do a little bit of walking and slow down on some of the uphill portions, but overall I'm pretty happy with how well I was able to stay in zone two. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end my workout. I think I did pretty good. Like I think I stayed pretty well in zone two Let's go take a look at the data though. Check this graph out. 
Having the alerts on my Apple Watch really helped me stay in zone two. My goal was to spend 90% of my run in zone two. By using the alerts, I was able to spend 90.6% of my run perfectly in zone two. For the past few months, I've been training zone two five to six times per week for at least 45 minutes each time. Since I started, I've noticed it's become a lot easier to stay in zone two, and I don't have to take that many walking breaks anymore. Also, my average resting heart rate has come down a lot. A few months ago, my average was 62 beats per minute, as I mentioned earlier, my average this past week has been 53 beats per minute. I'm really happy with these results and I plan to continue to train zone two for the foreseeable future. If you got any value from this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna see what I do next, make sure to follow along by subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.